right, moving on to example seven, f of x equals, or find f of x if f double prime is equal to that polynomial function. And notice they tell me f prime of one is equal to two, and f of one is equal to negative three. Now, if they tell me f prime, I can use f prime's value to find the c value of f prime, and then I can go from there to find f, and then use the um, f of one to find the c value, or whatever the constant value is, of the function, okay? If this said f of two is equal to something and f of one is equal to something, they're both f of, then you're going to get a cx plus d, and then you have to do a system of equations. That could happen. But again, it depends on what you're told for information. So the fact they told me something about f prime, that allows me to find the constant for f prime. Once I've found the constant for f prime, now it's a number instead of a c, so then I get a plus c on f again, or you can do plus d if you don't want to have the same letter um, in the same problem. So, and then once I get the f of x, I can go and figure out the constant there. So let's go ahead and do this. It's just a polynomial function, so it's not hard to deal with. So f prime of x, remember it's a two-step process. Step one, apply the rule. Step two, simplify the fractions. So the rule tells me for a polynomial function, I keep my constant whatever it is. I'm going to take x and raise it to one higher power and divide by that new power. I keep the constant what it is. I take x to one higher power, divide by the new power. And for just a constant, we stick an x on it. And again, we're doing an antiderivative, so we account for the possibility of the constant that exists in the original function. So plus c goes on that. If I were then to simplify, so that's step one, apply the rule. Step two, simplify fractions, reduce to lowest terms. Again, I'm still in f prime mode here, right? Because all I'm doing is reducing fractions. Going from f double prime to f prime because I applied the anti-differentiation rule, right? But now I'm just doing a little bit of reduction of fractions. That's just a arithmetic technique. So we, we're still in f prime. 90 divided by 5 is 18. 60 divided by 3 is 20. So we get 18x to the fifth minus 20x cubed plus 4x plus c. Now, what I know about is what f prime of 1 is, so I want to do f prime of 1. We already know it equals 2, but f of prime is equal to this function with the plus c on it, so I want to figure out what f prime looks like here. So 18 times 1 to the fifth is 18, minus 20 times 1 cubed is 20, plus 4 times 1 is 4, plus c. And 18 plus 4 is 22, minus 20 is 2. Well, these problems are kind of boring. Modify them before next year. All right. F prime of 1 is equal to 2 plus C, but F prime of 1 also equals 2, right? That simply means that 2 plus C must equal 2. Subtract the 2 from both sides, that gets me C is equal to 0. Again. Much more fun to me when they're not equal to 0, but oh well, it doesn't matter. But again, if I didn't know this information, I couldn't actually figure out C for F prime of X, then I'm going to go ahead and anti differentiate here immediately. I'll get a CX and a D on my second one. And I'm going to substitute both f functions in to figure out the missing stuff. But since I can figure out c here, c is equal to 0, that just means this goes away, right? A little bit of cross-hatching there, maybe it disappear. All right. So f prime of x is equal to this expression here. So if I want to then go to f of x, I simply have to anti-differentiate each term. Again, they're polynomial functions. I use the polynomial anti-differentiation rule, which is the constant stays as is. We increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. The constant stays as is. We increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. The constant stays as is. We increase the power by 1, add a, or divide by the new power. And then we account for a constant. Again, I can call it C here if I want to. If you don't like having the same letter on this paper at the same time, you can even call it D here. It doesn't matter what you call the constant, just so long as you're accounting for a constant. So f of x, if I simplify each object as much as possible, 18 over 6 is 3, x to the 6th. 20 divided by 4 makes minus 5, x to the 4th. 4 divided by 2 makes 2x squared plus d. And what we know is f of 1 equals negative 3. f of 1, in the case of this, is going to be 3 times 1 minus 5 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus d. That makes d, right? 3 and the 2 is 5 minus 5 is 0 plus d makes d. So f of 1 is equal to d. f of 1 also equals negative 3, which simply means that d must equal negative 3.
it wants to know what d equals, that just tells me how to modify this. So f of x equals all this stuff. Actually, let's go there. Take a detour. All right. It tells us what to make this. So there's my function, the plus d, but now d is actually known as negative 3, so we just substitute it in. So the final answer here, f of x equals 3x to the 6th minus 5x to the 4th plus 2x squared minus 3.